don't just buy it because it costs way too much money. It's just not worth it. You have to be happy with it um, because once you're entering the Hermes territory, um, I just wouldn't buy something I just really didn't love. Hey everyone, my name's Connor and welcome to my channel, The Closet. If you're stopping by for the first time on my channel, I talk all things luxury. So if that is something you are interested in, hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you are notified every time I upload new content. I like to upload videos on Saturdays and Wednesdays, so keep an eye out for that. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. So on my video today, I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step kind of informative video on selecting your first Birkin and all of the criteria that come with that. So if that is what you were interested in keep watching because there's a lot to get through. So if you've decided to purchase your first Birkin whether it's a bag you've always wanted or it's kind of the next logical step in your handbag collection or whatever it may be there is a lot of criteria that come with buying such a bag because the price differs so vastly. Talking in Australian dollars, when I refer to price in this video, I'll be talking in Australian dollars. So if you are overseas, you can just convert it to get a better idea um, of where I'm coming from. But they start from $10,000 roughly all the way up to like $30,000. And there are a lot of variables that contribute to that price range. So I'm going to go through that throughout this video. But you need to be on the ball when purchasing a bag of this caliber because you don't want to buy either something that you've like obviously overpaid for where you could have gotten it for a lot better a much better price or b buy something that is in poor condition hasn't been well looked after it has um or has signs to someone like me where it's been mistreated or the leather has been um you know painted poorly repaired poorly whatever it may be you've got to be across the board otherwise you could really end up with like a lemon bag <laughs> Is that a thing, a lemon bag? Oh, well, let's make it a thing. It's a lemon bag, like a really shitty bag. <laughs> so first things first, I know this may seem like the first obvious question, but the Birkin is a handheld, hand-carried bag only. There is no option to attach a strap. Um, it is a tote bag, essentially. So it can either be held, like handheld. You can either wear it on your wrist, like in between your wrist and your forearm, or it can be held in the crook of your arm basically. And that they're the only ways it can be worn. So if you were somebody who is crossbody all the way, strictly that, it's probably not the best bag for you. Um, but with that being said, I know some people have, uh, who are like diehard crossbody people, but they've added a Birkin in and they still use it just as much because either they're trying to justify the price of it or, they've made an allowance for such a bag because it is a Birkin or whatever, but I just needed to get that out. So, you know, you're like, I have thought that through, <laughs> but let's start with the sizes. So the Birkin comes in uh, four sizes, 25 centimeter, 30 centimeter, 35 centimeter, and 40 centimeter. Now I know you're thinking, oh, there's probably five centimeters difference between the 25 centimeter bag and the 30 centimeter bag. So, that's not a big difference, but it's not just the um, uh, the width, I guess, because that's what the, the, the bag is essentially measured in. But yes, the 25 centimeter is 25 centimeters, and then the 30 is 30 centimeters, but also the depth is a bit longer. It's not five centimeters longer. It's probably two or three centimeters longer, but then the height is also higher. And then the, um, the what's it called? The diameter between the top of the handle and then the bag where you essentially would put your arm through, that is also different. And um, the 25 centimeter has completely different hardware size, uh, completely different hardware size to the other size bags. It's about a third smaller. Um, so it is not just strictly the, you know, the width of the bag that is different. So let's start with the 25 centimeter bag. At the moment, the 25 centimeter bag is ironically the cheapest bag if you're talking like the cheapest Birkin, if you're talking about the retail price and it comes in with toga leather at about seven, uh, sorry, 14,600, 14,700 about that mark. So it's just under 15,000, but however, it is the most in demand size. Currently we're in this mini bag trend and everybody is just, in love with the 25. They love the look of it. They love how cute it is, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's, you know, that's what everyone's after. 
I must admit, when I first saw a Birkin 25 in person, the perception I had in my head after seeing it online or seeing it in other videos was completely different. It's really small. I remember looking at it thinking, uh, that is a bit too small, like that's not a 25, but it is. So my original opinion of it when I saw it was like, this is like a toy bag. Like I couldn't even fit my arm through the handle hole. Like I picked it up like this. And I remember thinking, uh, I would feel a bit silly carrying something like that. Like it looks like Polly Pocket or something. So uh, it is a very small bag and it is 25 centimeters, but internally you can't fit that much. And a lot of people use it as like an evening bag or a bare essentials kind of card holder keys, you know, little, little item bag. So Keeping in mind, while it is incredibly in demand, it is definitely on the smaller size. And I personally think if you're going to be spending all of that money on a Birkin, you would want something that's a bit more suited for different kind of needs. So I did some like pros and cons for the 25, and this is some from my opinion and others that I'd gotten from other people who own Birkin 25s. So I put, Pros, it's highly sought after, so it's a good investment because at the moment they fetch for such a high premium over the retail price. Um, it's a popular size, lightweight, so yes, it's not a heavy bag, it's very light. So if you're someone who um, hates the idea of carrying something heavy or you just, you know from other bags that you can't, you know, the bags that are a bit heavier, you tend not to use them. That's a good, a good pro. Um, but then some cons for the bag. Some people can't wear it in the crook of their arm because if you have a bigger arm or you're just, you know, bigger, it won't, you won't be able to put your arm all the way through it and it won't get right up into your crook. So you can only basically carry it handheld. Um, it doesn't hold much. So for the, like I said before, for the price, you're not getting the best value for money for a bag because it's quite limited. Um, and it can look a bit dainty. So it can look a bit, and this is just an opinion that I've gotten from other people and some from my own opinion as well. It looks a bit small. The next size is the 30 centimeter size. And this, um, you know, generally speaking is the more popular size, especially for women because it fits, um, that extra bit more and it's more of a daytime and evening time bag where you can put umbrella, wallet, car keys, little cosmetic bag, and you just get a bit more value for money with such an expensive bag. It is definitely wider from the top of the handle towards the back. So that diameter space is, uh, is taller, I guess, than the 25. So you can put the crook of, you can wear it on the crook of your arm. Um, it's a bit more accommodating for that. And um, it looks more like, like the bag aesthetically, in my opinion, looks more like the traditional Birkin silhouette. So it looks a bit more like a bag and not like a little tiny mini bag. And that is definitely a shared opinion that I've gotten from a lot of people who have both sizes. So that is definitely why a lot more people tend to choose the 30 because it just kind of brings a bit more to the table. The next size is the 35 centimeter size. And for those of you who don't know, the Birkin was originally created in the 35 centimeter size. And um, so it's, I guess, the classic size. Um, but this definitely, in my opinion, is my preferred size. I like the look of it. I think it is like classic Birkin silhouette. It is just absolutely a workhorse bag. You can fit so much in it. And yes, when you compare a photo of the Birkin 35 to the Birkin 25, it looks a lot bigger, but I've held a Birkin 35 in person and shown it to somebody who carries a 25 and they were like, wow, it actually doesn't look that big in person. Um, just like the 25 looks a lot smaller in person versus in photos. So definitely that perception you get from seeing photos online or in movies and things like that can be a bit warped and it's not until you physically see it with your own eyes in situ that it is definitely a completely different, um, you know, it's like a perception thing. So it is definitely a, um, a really great size bag, especially in America. I see on a lot of the Facebook groups that that is more popular than the 30 and a lot more people are seeking a 35 size. And I guess maybe it's to do with the general lifestyle, um, 
the lifestyle needs that people have over there. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, but in Australia, it's definitely like the 25 centimeter is in demand over the 35. The 35 centimeter bag is a great size. It fits laptop, it fits work things. You know, you can use it for a range of different, um, a range of different, you know, needs, but its biggest downfall probably is it can be quite heavy when it's full or even if it's half full and you're somebody who, you know, can't hold a bag that, you know, it gets weighty. It's definitely more on the weightier side. I couldn't tell you in kilos what it is. It's probably when it's empty, it's probably 1.5 kilos. So you can imagine when it's full, it's maybe three kilos, maybe depending on what you're carrying. So I, it is definitely on the weightier side, but people prefer to take a 35 when they're traveling as their everyday bag, because you don't really know what you're going to need, I guess, when you're traveling. So you take a bag that can accommodate all things. Um, but yeah, definitely my favorite is the 35. And the last size is the 40 centimeter size. This bag isn't as popular and um, it actually fetches quite a high premium on the resale market too, because they are a lot rarer. I think generally Birkin 40s aren't really offered in the store unless specifically requested or you've done a special order for it. So um, that's probably why they fetch for, you know, a more of a premium price, but they are definitely a popular option for traveling. They're a popular option for men as well, or they're just a generally more popular for people who just prefer larger bags. And the, you know, the biggest downfall would be the weight of it. Like I was um, mentioning before with the Birkin 35, you can imagine if that is, you know, 1.5 kilos empty, the 40 would probably be two kilos or 2.5 kilos. So if you're picturing an all leather bag, um, that's like a tote, it's quite wide and yet you're going to get that weight from it. But I personally would love a Birkin 40 over all of the sizes, but I just generally love the look of bigger bags. It's that inner nineties in me, I guess, where it's like big bags, Vicky Beckham back in 2003 with her huge ostrich Birkins, like iconic. <laughs> now moving on to the hardware. So Birkins come in four types of hardware. There is gold, palladium, rose gold, or permabrass. Now, rose gold and permabrass are a lot more rarer. Probably permabrass is a bit more readily available than rose gold. And then rose gold would probably be the most rare if you were to say that. Um, and they're just not that commonly seen on bags. Um, and it's one of those kind of wild cards that MS throws out where it's like this bag is now this much more elusive because it has this rare hardware on it. And it, it's just the way it is. Um, you'll probably see permabrass on more vintage bags, um, you know, from maybe 10 years ago. I don't really know if that's vintage, but it was definitely a lot more popular 10 years ago, but I have seen it pop up a lot on the market in mini Kelly bags because mini Kelly bags do not come with rose gold hardware. They only come with gold, palladium or permabrass. So that's probably why you're seeing it to make that mini Kelly that much more elusive. <laughs> um, and then rose gold hardware, it comes up a lot in bigger size bags I've noticed, like Birkin 30, Birkin 35. Um, and I've seen it and it is, it's honestly, it is such a beautiful rose gold. It contrasts so well um, on some more neutral colors or even black bags. And you definitely notice it when you see it because it's just the, Hermes's rose gold is just this amazing, uh, I don't even know how you call, what you'd call it, but you know it's rose gold. It's like that pinky hue, but it's not too girly, girly pink. It's just a really good salmon-y, I don't know what you'd call it, but if you were to, you know, find a bag on the resale market or even be offered one in the store, I can guarantee you it is more likely going to be gold or palladium hardware. So if you are set on getting a bag in rose gold hardware or permabrass hardware, you'd probably have to maybe put that on the back burner and then focus your kind of requirements more towards the color or like the color of the bag or gold or palladium hardware, just because it's such a rare thing to get those types of hardwares that you'd be ultimately setting yourself up for disappointment when you weren't offered that or you won't find it on the pre-loved market. So it's just something to keep in mind. I know a lot of people who um, have Birkins on their wish list or they're seeking out a Birkin. I hear them say, I really want rose gold hardware, but it's definitely just a really rare thing to come by. So I wouldn't probably make it like a deal breaker. 
Also, one thing to keep in mind with hardware is um, I know some people are like either die-hard palladium hardware people or die-hard gold hardware people. Um, but sometimes the type of leather color you pick or you're looking like searching for doesn't always contrast well with the particular hardware. For example, Rose Potpourri, which is this like beautiful pinky purple, maybe a few shades below neon. It's such a beautiful, bright, bold color, but it is rarely seen with gold hardware. And that's because it contrasts so well with palladium hardware. And it's because the gold hardware almost tones out the color boldness. So, um, you know, if you're someone who is gold hardware obsessed, but you're obsessed with a certain color, sometimes it works more in your favor to pick something with a different type of hardware because then you really get to reap the benefits of the famous Hermes leather colors. Next on the list is colors. Now, like I was saying at the very start of this video, if you were purchasing a Birkin, going off the kind of motivation that you're filling a spot, what are you filling the spot for? Do you need a bag that is a bright color? Do you want something that you want to use all of the time? So maybe you're heading towards a neutral um, kind of path and neutrals don't have to be beiges, blacks, creams. You can have a neutral pastel, you can have a neutral bold color, but the shade is quite complementary to um, more like plain clothes. Does that make sense? So the term neutral, I guess, you know, is so commonly referred to as plain colors, but it doesn't have to be that way at all. I personally, and somebody who wears very, you know, like white, gray, black, navy, I wear very kind of plain clothes, but I like bags to kind of pop, or I like my accessories, I guess, to kind of pop, to kind of tie things in. So if you are stuck on a color, I wouldn't just go, oh, I'm just going to get a black bag because I don't know what to choose. Really think about it. Really think about what you want in your collection. Really think about what works and look at kind of the similar bags that you reach for most and the reasons why. Of course, with Hermes colored like bags in a certain color, that heavily dictates the price when it comes to resale. So if you want an Etoupe bag, a gold bag, a Cray bag, those colors are so heavily sought after, it almost doubles the price of the bag instantly. Um, especially when there is a great color combo like Cray with gold hardware in a Kelly 25 or a Birkin 25, that is when you're gonna see the massive, um, the massive price rise for something on the pre-loved market. And that's why you will be looking at a, say a certain type of blue Birkin, you know, 25 with just palladium hardware versus a Cray Birkin 25 with gold hardware. And you're like, why is there a 10 to $15,000 price difference? Like I'm not getting it. They're both Birkins. So these color combos, these size trends, these things all play a huge significant part in the price. And that's why you really need to do a lot of research and not just purchase the first thing. In saying that, there are also bags that are in these, you know, highly sought after color combos that are overpriced. Like you can get them a lot cheaper, even paying a premium. You don't need to go and spend $35,000 on this sought after combo when you can easily get it for $28,000. So being a bit more smart and knowing the market really does play a, a crucial part too. So with regards to the colors, pick things that you know that work for you. There are definitely items that I know I love the color of and they're a beautiful color and it's just absolutely amazing. But I know if I get it, I will really struggle to pair it with things I wear and then ultimately I won't be reaching for it as much. Um, so yeah, if you like neutrals, if you, you know, traditional neutrals, like a tube and things like that, go for gold, get in a tube bag, get a gold bag, get a cray bag. But if you want to mix things up a little, or, you know, you like to kind of walk the line with your bags, you might be somebody who likes neon colors and all your bags are bright, like the color lime that Hermes has or shocking pink or rose pink. I think it's rose shocking row shocking it's called <laughs> you know you like those beautiful bold eye-catching colors and that's what works for you that is your forte and you go for gold but definitely making a conscious decision is the point i'm making next is the leathers so 
Um, there are quite a few different leathers that you can purchase Birkins in and I've actually done a leather guide video a, over a year ago now Probably one of the few like one of the first videos I did so I'll link it up above um, But there are quite a lot of different leathers that Hermes produce for their bags and a lot of them have different characteristics so um, whether you're somebody who likes a smooth more delicate leather like lambskin or whether you're somebody who likes a um, a grained kind of more natural traditional leather or whether you're somebody who likes the laminated structured leathers you've got to kind of know what you prefer especially when you're dropping Birkin money like you've got to know exactly what you want so I would do research on the leathers and you know not just watching my leather video there's a lot of other Hermes leather reviews on some people have dedicated a whole video to just one type of leather and how it match, like suits their characteristics so it's not like with chanel when they've got lambskin calfskin caviar like there's a lot of other different leathers out there um i personally prefer togo leather um because i like the veins i like the way the veins look and i like having grained leathers i'm not a fan of smooth leathers um and i'm not a fan of delicate leathers um, especially on a Birkin, it's just not, um, it's just not something I would prefer. Um, I like to be able to feel the grain. I like the texture to it and, um, looking at something that's shiny and smooth while I get that some people like that and it doesn't look bad whatsoever. It's just not something I like. Um, another thing to point out is that different types of leathers that Hermes have their Birkins in significantly changes the appearance of a certain color. For example, a Togo Atoop bag looks completely different than an Epsom Atoop bag. The color is a few shades off. It just gives a completely different look. So you've got to kind of factor all of that into when you're looking at um, different types of leathers but do your research know that if you were using it as an everyday bag I wouldn't go for something like swift leather where it's a lot more delicate but if it's your evening bag you you know you've already got a few other Birkins and you want one in um, swift leather because of how the color pops then that's the avenue you would go down so it's just about knowing the kind of pros and cons of all the different types of leathers so you're not shocked when you have your everyday Birkin bag and it is a delicate leather so ultimately, when it comes to buying a Birkin, the size, the leather, the hardware combo, and a combination of all of them put together heavily dictate the price, like I was referencing before with the Cray bag. So if you were somebody who desperately has their heart set on a, a taupe or gold or cray bag and you want gold hardware in a smaller size i can assure you you will pay the premium for it but if that's what you want then that is what you want and there's no point buying something especially a birkin because it was cheap if it doesn't meet the needs if it doesn't answer all of the kind of you know bag requirement boxes that you want ticked don't just buy it because it costs way too much money it's just not worth it you have to be happy with it um because once you're entering the hermes territory um i just wouldn't buy something i just really didn't love in all honesty um but yes the price significantly differs at the moment um especially with social media especially with youtube and bloggers and all of those things like that we are just heavily influenced by trends and we are in this mini bag small bag trend at the moment and I personally do not think that the small bag trend is going to last you know that much longer and I and it'll revert back to kind of medium to larger size bags soon that's just personally what I feel I can see this trends from the fashion houses starting to influence that into their into their um, um, collections at the moment and it always goes full circle. It's gonna come back to what it once was. So, you know, in saying that, I would not just influence bags like a Birkin on trends. I would stick to a more classic size because ultimately it'll never go out of style. Do I think Birkins go out of style? No, I do not. But I think if you're spending such an exorbitant amount of money, you don't wanna be having a little small bag that once upon a time was the in thing. Um, and it just isn't as practical as it once, as it should be, I guess, for such a large amount of money. So definitely do your research, have a look at what works for you and you can't go wrong. And lastly, where can you buy a Birkin? Should you buy it in store versus buying it through a reseller or pre-loved? That's a really great question. And it's definitely not something that I am going to say what you should or shouldn't do. But if you're going down the route of purchasing it in the boutique, 
unless you get very lucky and you happen to get one on a whim from a boutique or you're traveling and they happen to just offer you one or you have the privilege of going to Paris and entering the lottery system to get an appointment at the um, flagship store you may be offered one and that's probably the best way to go because you're not paying for a premium and you're getting one fresh from the boutique however the cons of that are you will waste time trying to um, you know hopefully be offered one um, you may not necessarily be offered something that you're after and more or less likely you won't be you won't be offered something that you're after you have to compromise and if you're paying you know in the thousands of dollars I don't really think you want to be compromising on such a huge purchase so that is a very big con the compromise but if you're someone who is flexible you're someone who um, wants the experience of the boutique purchase you're somebody who wants everything that goes with that that's that route but then on the other hand going through a um, reputable reseller for example I own my own business Conrad's Closet where I source bags from clients who have either gotten it fresh from the boutique or they have purchased it from a reseller and it's just not what they wanted so they ultimately passing it on and because I have connections with people like that in all different places in the world I'm able to leverage that to people mostly in Australia who want a safe platform to purchase from obviously I'm not the only consigner in Australia that does that a lot of other people do it but my only advice is and this is not being biased but wherever you ultimately decide to choose from ensure that they're reputable ensure that they have a tenure with clients ensure that they um you know have credible references and then i guess you can't go wrong down that route if you're doing all of your due diligence when purchasing something but the the biggest cons of purchasing um sorry the biggest pros of purchasing it pre-loved is you get the selection of picking what you want ultimately you can be picky you can be picky on the size you can be picky on the hardware the colors because you have free reign of what the market has out there you're not limited by what an essay is just going to present to you and it's take it or leave it and obviously the biggest um con would be hey wait why is con like connor that's like my name's negative <laughs> <laughs> that literally just occurred to me then but obviously like I was <laughs> saying one of the cons is the premium price you'll pay yes you will pay a lot of money to purchase a um, a Birkin on the pre-loved market you'll pay that premium however if you were to traditionally buy it through a store with the exceptions of just getting lucky you will be paying money to purchase items in the store to be offered a bag it could be double what the bag's worth it could be ten thousand dollars it could be twenty five thousand dollars you don't know it's so you know dependent upon the essay and the boutique so me i would rather better the devil you know know what you're going to be purchasing um know what the premium is and then that's all you really have to pay you're not guessing you're not hoping you're going to be offered something that you potentially don't want so play it safe and do that thanks so much guys for watching my birkin 101 video hopefully this has given you some information and if it hasn't given you any information you already knew hopefully it's given you some different thought processes or different avenues that you didn't think that you had explored fully and hopefully it's just able to give you a greater insight into buying a Birkin for the first time. Obviously it is such a large purchase it's something that shouldn't be rushed so hopefully this can tick some boxes. Thank you so much guys for watching my channel and I'll speak to you next time.